Good morning and welcome to SB Connect, where we transform lives by connecting to and educating for the world of work. Today, we have Sergeant Salier from San Bernardino County Sheriff Department here to speak to us today about the dangers of fentanyl. So without further ado, let's welcome Sergeant Salier on dangers of fentanyl. All right, my name is Dave Sawyer with the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department Gangs Narcotics Division, and I work with the overdose response team. Uh, what my team does is go out on fentanyl overdoses and try and investigate the people who are selling fentanyl out on the streets. And I'm here to talk to you about fentanyl and the dangers and some of the things you might see um, out and about. So some of the things we're going to cover is uh, who are victims of overdose and what, and what do they look like? just a basic idea of what synthetic opioids are and what exactly is fentanyl. I know we all see it in the news and hear about it, but we're gonna talk about what it actually is. Uh, we're also gonna go into what an overdose looks like. What, are, what does it look like if you think one of your buddies is gonna overdose and what can you do to help them? So we're gonna touch on all those things, but the first thing I wanna talk about is who are our victims of overdose? We kind of have a traditional mindset in law enforcement, but I think all of us that, that a lot of time drug addicts and people who are overdose are, are homeless people and, and people um, that live on the streets, but that's not necessarily the case that, as I'm sure you guys are hearing now. And um, really our, our victims, our drug users and our victims of overdose are, are everybody. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen in the news lately, um, we've had many famous celebrities overdose. Mac Miller, Tyler Skaggs of the uh, Angels, Prince, Tom Petty. You guys might be a little bit young to know Tom Petty's music, but I, I'm sure you've heard it out there. Um, and it's just really sad. And the point is that uh, fentanyl and drug overdoses are affecting everybody. Even your peers, I'm sure a lot of you know about people or have heard of people your age who have overdosed and hopefully survived, but there are a lot of people who are overdosing and dying out there. So the reality is, is overdose affects everybody. Here's just kind of a breakdown of the age groups um, for people who have died overdosing on fentanyl and other drugs. But as you can see, it's a full spectrum, mainly with our younger people. And there's just kind of a breakdown of males versus females. This is the new young face of fentanyl addiction before and after 22 year old Katie Mather forehead and chin clawed open by her own fingernails because the use of fentanyl makes her skin crawl. I spot her on the strip Surrey's infamous drug hangout and ask if she'll talk to me. She puts cover up on her raw skin. So I am literally just did my mascara and I'm good to go. Katie settles in to tell her story. <laughs> Perfect. How she ended up living on the street three months ago, addicted to fentanyl. Well, I've been using, it's actually funny. Well, not funny, it's terrible. I have a really addictive personality. I've always been like addicted to something, whether it was shopping or, or Facebook or whatever. And um, I did an oxy. I got addicted right away. And then I got, a, I finally, like, I found a regular dealer and I started picking up all the time. I remember the day the fentanyl came out and my dealer said, you know, I've got these new pills. They're fake oxys. He didn't tell me they were fentanyl because nobody knew what fentanyl was yet. He just said they're a hundred times stronger and they're only $5 more. And I was just like, okay, because I, you know, I, was getting a pretty high tolerance at this point. Oxys, OxyContin led to fake 80s, fentanyl posing as OxyContin. Immediately, Katie wanted nothing else. I could buy one of these fake 80s, put them into four lines, and two lines would last me a full day. That's how strong it was. And if I did a full pill, I would OD. Katie says she's overdosed 11 times, most recently a few days ago brought back by paramedics or friends on the strip who have naloxone, the powerful opioid antidote. Every time I do dope, I know I'm taking a risk. I know that I, I might die, but like, it doesn't matter how many times I've OD'd, I still use the next day because the withdrawals are so bad. 
Katie has been in the news before. She and her sister attacked by a Rottweiler cross back in December. Katie was badly hurt and spent time in hospital. She says that cemented her addiction to fentanyl. As she talks, blood starts to seep through her makeup. Katie, you're 22. Why would you risk this? Well, at first it was just fun, right? It was just for fun. It was just a party drug that, you know, like, and there's been some things that I've gone through and it helped with a lot of pain. And especially after, you know, that dog attack, I, I just couldn't stop, you know? I asked Katie if she worries about herself and her future. Sometimes. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I just like to take things at one day at a time, right? I don't kind of just go with it and hopefully, you know, hope for the best. For now, the best Katie can hope for is to wake up from her next fix of fentanyl. Eric Rankin, CBC News, Surrey. So a couple things catch me in that video. Um, first notice um, how she kind of got hooked on fentanyl. She was attacked by a dog and prescribed pain medication. And she said she had an addictive personality. So she just got prescribed that pain medicine, but must have liked the way it helped her feel. And she started to abuse that. And she started to progress into stronger pain medications and eventually into fentanyl. Also, she overdosed 11 different times. That doesn't always happen. And we'll talk about the risks you're running, even if you just try this drug one time. Um, but it, it really is dangerous. But, but it's such a highly addictive drug that if you try it one time, you can become addicted. And she's overdosed 11 times. And she doesn't care that she might die tomorrow. She just wants that high again. So she doesn't have to go through the withdrawals of it. Um, so what is fentanyl? Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid. And what that means is it's a, it's a drug made in a laboratory. Most of the precursor chemicals um, that, we, that are used to make it come from China. And at least on the legal side, the um, chemicals are being shipped to Mexico and they are make it, making it illegally down there and it's coming across the border that way. Uh, fentanyl is in a powder in its pure form, but we'll talk about some of the other um, forms later. It is a Schedule II controlled substance. Um, what does scheduling of drugs mean? A Schedule I drug is something that is completely illegal and has low, no legitimate medical purpose. Fentanyl does have a legitimate medical purpose. Um, a lot of us have been prescribed uh, fentanyl or had it for a surgery, but traditionally it is used for terminal cancer patients, um, either through it's dissolved in a throat lozenge or through a transdermal patch, meaning it's absorbed through the skin. But what we're seeing now in the illegal market is they are mixing fentanyl with cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine. In fact, I've talked to a lot of drug users who said they can no longer find heroin without fentanyl in it. So let's talk about fentanyl a little bit more. As you can see those uh, little grains of powder next to the penny, that is about two milligrams of fentanyl, and that is a lethal dose. You can see here in the center uh, where those little vials are, that much, that's how much heroin could kill you, how much fentanyl could kill you, and then just a couple little specks are, are what carfentanyl is. Fentanyl is 50 times stronger than heroin and 100 times stronger than morphine. So when you go to the doctor, say you're gonna, you need some anesthesia or pain treatment, you're typically given about 50 to 100 micrograms of fentanyl. I know you guys probably don't like math, but let's do a little math here. So there are a thousand micrograms in a gram and two milligrams of fentanyl can cause you to overdose. So that's 2000 micrograms. So a doctor will only give you 50 to 100 micrograms, but potentially what's gonna cause you to overdose is upwards of 2000. Um, now, a scare, really scary drug that, that does exist out there is a, a friend of fentanyl. It's an analog called carfentanyl. This is used as a large animal tranquilizer, typically with elephants. There have been some drug seizures uh, in Southern California with carfentanyl in it. It is rare, but this is a 10,000 times stronger than morphine and a hundred times stronger than fentanyl. So that's pretty crazy how strong that is. 
So the um, drug cartels are making what we call counterfeit pharmaceutical pills. You'll hear these pills referred to as oxys, norcos, and those all refer to legitimate pharmaceutical pills that are used to treat pain. However, what the um, drug dealers are doing is they are making these fake pills and putting fentanyl in them to make them look exactly like the other pills. So if you see on the upper left, a blue oxycodone pill with an M30 on it, the one on the bottom is actually the real one. And the one on the top is the fake one that contains fentanyl. This is probably the most common pill we see out there, but they can put them in anything. It's also real common for them to put them in Xanax bars, which you see in the top middle. And just to give you an idea of the volume that we're seeing on the major level of narcotics, the picture on the bottom right, those all bags are full of these little blue M30 pills and the fake Xanax pills. And all of those pills there contain fentanyl. So the M30 pills are the blues. Um, this is probably by far the most common thing we're seeing out there. Um, if you come across one of these pills, and it's not coming from a doctor or a pharmacy, I can almost guarantee you that pill is gonna have fentanyl in it. So it's extremely dangerous. And we think of them like chocolate chip cookies because when they are making these pills down in Mexico or in someone's garage here in the United States, they're just mixing the, that powdered fentanyl and whatever cutting agents up in say a bucket, in a bathtub, in a trash can. And then they're putting them in this pill press machine and making these pills. But there's absolutely no quality control there. So the best way to think about it is think about it like a chocolate chip cookie. You know, when your mom makes chocolate chip cookies, sometimes you grab that first cookie because you see it has a lot of chocolate chips in it. Or maybe you grab a, a cookie and you take the first couple bites and you're like, ah, these don't have any chocolate chips in them, but you save that really sweet bite for the last one because it has a lot of chocolate chips. That's what's going on with these pills and the fentanyl. That really sweet bite or that strong portion of that pill is what has all the fentanyl in it because it's not being evenly mixed in these pills. And that's what's causing people to overdose and end up eventually dying. So there's a lot of scary trends we're seeing out there. Um, the picture on the left was actually a counterfeit Tylenol pill seized in uh, Ohio. And I know it's kind of dirty and it looks like it's been in somebody's pocket for a few months, but what that is is a counterfeit Tylenol pill that contained fentanyl. Um, on the right, you see some M30 pills, but what they're doing now is they're starting to make them in different colors. I don't know if you guys have heard about rainbow fentanyl, but they almost look like Smarties or Skittles, maybe they're called on the street. These contain fentanyl and are just as dangerous as the blue ones. So it, it, I can't stress to you enough that unless something is coming from your parents or an actual pharmacy, you have absolutely no idea what you are taking and it's unsafe to take. Even something like Tylenol, if you, if you just get a Tylenol from a buddy that happens to have some at school, you don't know what's in that pill. You need to be very careful with this stuff. Local leaders are marking International Overdose Awareness Day today by highlighting the dangers of synthetic opioids like fentanyl. The drug is the leading cause of overdose deaths here in the U.S. And tonight, the DEA is now warning about the rise of rainbow fentanyl. CBS 8's Rocia de la Fay has more on the brightly colored pills that are being used to attract younger people. Tonight, the county administration building is lit up purple for International Overdose Awareness Day. 1,300 lives were lost due to drug overdoses in San Diego over the past year, with fentanyl accounting for as many as 800 deaths. Most overdose deaths in the nation are being linked to fentanyl, a strong synthetic opioid that is up to 50 times more potent than heroin. Now the Drug Enforcement Agency is warning of an alarming trend known as rainbow fentanyl. The drugs look like candy and come in a variety of bright colors, shapes, and sizes. And they're being used to target children and young adults. We know that there's really no bounds to the creativity of, of the cartels who are selling 
and profiting off these drugs. San Diego and Imperial counties account for about 60% of the fentanyl being seized around the entire country. Just last month, border officials seized more than 600 pounds of fentanyl in just one smuggling attempt. U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of California, Randy Grossman, says the new form of fentanyl is a deliberate effort by drug traffickers to drive addiction. We know that the cartels are profit-driven, and they are their goal is to put as many drugs in the hand of, of, of users as possible so it could drive up their profits. And they're going to use whatever creative means that they can. Rainbow fentanyl has been seized in at least 18 states so far. The DEA states that the different colors don't necessarily indicate a higher potency level, and every color should be considered extremely dangerous. You don't know what you're getting right now. Now is not the time to be experimenting with one oxy pill or with a, a small amount of cocaine. That just that, that experiment could cost you your life. Grossman says he realizes that officials won't be able to prosecute their way out of the crisis and will be focusing heavily on prevention strategies. Garcia de la Fe, CBS 8. So a couple different forms there. There's the colored M30 pills, and then you also saw some clumps of like different, different colored stuff that almost looks like chalk or like an eraser. It's kind of softer, more like a, a putty, like eraser type thing but those are the things you wanna look out for. So this just gives you an idea of how many overdose deaths we're seeing in the United States by state. This is back from 2019, so it's a little bit older information, but last year in California, there were 10,000 overdose deaths just in this state alone. Um, to give you a breakdown kind of by year, to show you how bad this problem is getting, look back on 2015, there were 33,000 overdose deaths in the United States. But back in 2020, we're already up to 69,000. And if you look at the percentage of the light blue line to kind of that pink line, back in 2015, the, the pink line signifies the synthetic opioid overdoses. So in 2015, just kind of looking at it, it's about a quarter to a third of the overdoses. But now in 2020, we're looking at probably 80, 85, 90% of all drug overdose deaths are coming from synthetic opioid. And the strong, um, the main component uh, or the main drug synthetic opioid killing people is fentanyl. Um, so last year was the first time in a 12 month period, we had over 100,000 drug overdose deaths in the United States. I believe the number actually has, uh, is up to now in a 12 month period, 107,000 just in the United States. So in San Bernardino County, uh, here's the numbers that we are looking at. And these are just fentanyl overdose deaths. So in 2020, we had 251. In 2021, 317. And through this year already, there's 196. But these deaths don't get reported as, as official fentanyl overdose deaths till the coroner sends off their autopsy and does all the toxicology. So those numbers are like a few months behind. So I have no doubt we're gonna exceed that 317 here in 2022. And if you can see from all these charts, the number of deaths from these synthetic opioids just keeps going up and up and the problem keeps getting worse. Recent overdoses are shining a spotlight on the trouble with opioids in the Central Valley, especially among teenagers. And these days, fentanyl is front and center. The reason why a lot of people haven't heard of it is because it's not typically prescribed as a pill. These aren't being produced in United States laboratories. They're coming in from all over the world, predominantly our southern border through Mexico. It only takes one time. It's not something that you ever want to try, ever. And it's like playing Russian roulette. You don't know what you're getting. Good luck. 911 state emergency. We've got two, uh, two people that are, looks like they're OD. I don't know what happened. I'm dead. I, I, Not one, but two kids that were foaming at the mouth, gray, purple, completely unresponsive. I thought he was cleaning up. I thought he was getting better. I trusted him, and I shouldn't have. You don't even have to meet your drug dealer anymore. You can purchase these drugs on social media. You can actually pay through apps. And every parent will tell you, God, I wish I would have known about this. 
How do you not know about this? Fentanyl pills don't care about what color your skin is, how much money you make, where you live. It's an equal opportunity destructor in a sense. This isn't just another drug. You're not just going to wake up with a sick to your stomach feeling or a hangover. You're not going to wake up. That's the difference. So that was a special called The Killer High that talked about this, um, this issue that we're facing. So how is fentanyl used? Um, I'm not trying to educate you guys, but if you see this kind of thing, maybe you want to tell somebody, you see somebody in the bathroom um, at school who's using this kind of stuff. Um, one way is they call it chasing the dragon and that's smoking it off tin foil. I'll show you a video of that in a second. Uh, fentanyl can also be used in, in vape pens. All you have to do is burn that um, powder or, or vapor and it can be inhaled that way. Um, a common way is the, the pills or the powder are crushed up and snorted. Um, fentanyl can be injected. Like I said, it, it's, it's pretty rare these days that heroin does not have fentanyl in it. And I think most of us know heroin is used by injection. Um, also, these pills can just be swallowed and can be ingested that way. Here's an example of chasing the dragon. So what they're doing there is just inhaling the vapors off of the powder. And something to be cognizant of is when the um, fentanyl is burned, a lot of the cutting agents in it, there's a lot of sugars and it smells like buttered popcorn. So if you're at school and you smell that in your in one of the bathroom stalls and you see some smoke coming out of there, I, you might want to call somebody, call campus security and see if they can go check it out. The paraphernalia as far as um, fentanyl goes, like we said, the, the um, foil, uh, lighters, straws, things you're using to smoke it with, um, and of course, needles. Um, so terms for fentanyl that you guys may hear people talking about, we've talked about a lot of them, but most of them are based off of what the actual prescription drug that these fake pills are made to look like, like Oxys, Roxys, Perks, Norcos, uh, M30s. People on the street call the powder Fent or Fetty or Fenty, China White. And again, here are some examples of the on the bottom, the real pills along with the fake pills. And how many of you can tell me which one of those are the fake one and which one is the real one? And you really can. Uh, that center pink pill is Adderall. And then again, the Xanax bars on the far right. So what does it look like if someone is overdosing? So what fentanyl does is it really slows their bo the body down. So it's gonna cause them to breathe less until eventually their lungs shut down and stop breathing altogether. But what this does is they get less oxygen in their body and it causes them to come, become pale or almost blue. Uh, you wanna look for constricted pupils. When the opioids hit their system, it causes their um, eyes to constrict. So really small pupils, it can cause them to go unconscious. And something that we hear a lot of is kind of a choking or gurgling sound. Or if you have friends or family, what we hear on a lot of people who overdose and die is they hear them making a really strange, unique snoring sound when they think they're sleeping. So if somebody's sleeping and he's making like a weird snoring sound and you can't wake that person up, you need to call for help right away because that person could be overdosing. It's also very common for people to vomit when they use fentanyl because the opioids cause um, them to become nauseous, especially when they get so much in their system that they're overdosing. Um, it can be um, a symptom of an overdose is what we call being on the nod. And what that is, is the person will just be standing, sitting there, and all of a sudden they keep falling asleep and they just keep falling asleep, almost like they can't stay awake. Um, so that's something to look of. Um, also be aware of if you know of people who you're using with withdrawals, 
Uh, they'll feel sick. A lot of times when they take the drugs, they're scratching. Um, we just recently had a case where they always knew the kid was using drugs because he'd, he'd always be itching himself and couldn't stop itching, almost like he had mosquito bites or something like that. So what to do if somebody overdoses? Just like any medical emergency, the first thing you want to do is call 911 and call for help. Um, I don't know if you guys are trained in CPR or not, um, but something you need to be careful with with fentanyl is if they have just snorted a substance or smoked a substance, there is a chance of cross-contamination with that. Um, so you just need to be careful. Um, hopefully a lot of you in your schools carry Narcan or in the process of looking at getting Narcan available. But again, you're gonna wanna notify a staff member and they'll know how to respond to that properly. But what Narcan does is it reverses the symptoms of the overdose by blocking what are called the opioid receptors. So it basically neutralizes the fentanyl temporarily. Um, if someone is overdosing and they stop breathing, you will wanna um, give them CPR because if their brain's not getting oxygen, it's gonna start to die. And if it takes too long without the brain getting oxygen, that's what causes them to pass away. So here is Narcan, Naloxone. Um, I'm hearing now that sometimes even if you get pain medication from a doctor, um, they're actually prescribing this. Um, but a lot of people carry it now. Um, hopefully, like I said, some of your schools have it. I've heard of some communities that are starting to um, put them with like their AEDs just because this is getting to be such a big problem. Um, Narcan is not a permanent fix, it's a temporary fix. So it blocks those opioid receptors for a short period of time, maybe 30 to 60 minutes, so you can get to a hospital and get treated properly. But if you do give somebody Narcan or somebody receives Narcan, they need to go to the hospital because when that Narcan wears off, they're gonna, they could re-overdose because the, the fentanyl is still in their blood system. The investigation continues into the overdose death of a high school teenager. Two teen boys are already behind bars, and tonight we are hearing from the family about their loss while police search for more of those responsible. KKL 9's Lauren Posen is live in Hollywood now where she spoke with that young girl's family. Lauren. Well, Pat, now the investigation has turned to detectives trying to find the drug dealer that sold those teen suspects those dangerous pills. Now, here at the high school, it's a growing memorial for the teen who died, Melanie Ramos. There's flowers here, candles, and balloons with the words, I love you, written on them. They're broken. The aunt of 15-year-old Melanie Ramos says her niece was one of a kind. She had, like, a little spice to herself, um, you know. She wasn't your typical um, girl. The teen died Tuesday night from an overdose at Bernstein High School in Hollywood. Two teens are now behind bars in connection to her death. A 15-year-old is booked on suspicion of manslaughter. He's accused of selling Percocet laced with fentanyl to Ramos and another student. When the suspect was taken into custody, Chief Michael Moore says officers found additional pills on him. And a 16-year-old is also booked on the same serious charge. He's accused of selling drugs to a third student at a park less than a mile from the high school. It's a Russian roulette, except the, except the, the, the weapon may have one empty chamber and the rest of it are likely things that could kill you. Both attended Apex, a charter school on the Bernstein campus. This mom, who came to lay flowers down at Ramos's memorial, says she told the school for months about suspicious activity. And they were aware of drug use and drug sell on the campus during school, after school. LAUSD superintendent says making all schools safe in the district is a top priority. Using children to harm children is the greatest crime, the greatest sin. Meanwhile, the Ramos's family is planning a funeral. They don't want Melanie's death to be in vain. Think of Melanie before you take anything, because our Melanie wouldn't want you to take it. Don't take anything you're not supposed to take. And Melanie's aunt told me that she was the oldest of two younger sisters. She was the big sister, and that the girls are taking her death very hard. They consider... We'll go ahead and move on there. Um, but yeah, the, um, that's what my team does is we investigate the overdose deaths. 
But the reality is, is we don't want to arrest people for selling fentanyl. We want to educate you guys and prevent it from even becoming a problem at the front end, because we understand we're not going to arrest our way out of the problem. But at the same time, we understand that people, if they're knowingly going to sell the, the, a drug that's this dangerous, that they know is going to kill people, that there's going to be some repercussions from it. So this flyer went out to uh, all the schools in the county, and, and we're just really trying to educate people about what's going on. And there's just one more quick video, and then I'll, I'll open it up to some questions and whatnot. What is inside this vial could kill you almost instantly. In fact, this much would kill you and I if we split it. It's odorless, tasteless, and it's currently being disguised as nearly any drug you can buy off the street. This is fentanyl. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid that is 100 times stronger than morphine and about 50 times the strength of heroin. Fentanyl has sedative effects and will rapidly slow down a person's breathing. Just a milligram too much of fentanyl can result in hypoxia, a decrease of oxygen to the brain, and can quickly lead to death. Sounds more like a poison than a drug. If you were to ingest fentanyl and live, your body would begin having withdrawals within a few hours. Fentanyl is one of the most addictive substances known to man. It is also rather cheap to produce considering its potency, which is why it is being used in all types of illicit drugs. Pills, cocaine, methamphetamine, MDMA, even some instances of marijuana. Illegal drugs have been forever changed because of fentanyl. The most notable are the fake prescription pills. In 2021, the DEA alone sees over 20 million fake prescription pills made of fentanyl. These pills, designed to look exactly like prescription drugs such as oxycodone, Percocet, Xanax, Adderall, and more, contain nothing but fentanyl in a colored binder and are pressed to look just like the pills you would get from a pharmacy. The difference, though, is the matter of life or death. The DEA has reported over 42% of pills tested for fentanyl contain a potentially lethal dose. So maybe it's not the first pill someone takes, but one shortly after. Over the past few years, there has been enough fentanyl seized to kill every person in the United States. Fentanyl is being found everywhere in almost every drug, but you won't know it's there until it's too late. Your decision to not try a drug is one of the most important decisions that you can make. Over time, pop culture seems to glorify drugs more and more. Drugs have been promoted as solutions to mental health struggles like depression and anxiety. Trying drugs has been normalized as something that is just part of going through life. In reality, it is something that will take your life from you. With fentanyl's increasing prevalence in nearly all drugs today, promoting drug use is one of the most dangerous messages an influential person can communicate, especially to young people. The glamorous lifestyle associated with drug use is a facade. Many famous people suffer brutal addictions behind the scenes, and fentanyl is exposing that truth. More and more great artists, athletes, and talents are falling to fentanyl. With them are many others who fell for the lie that using illicit drugs can solve any pain or problem in your life. It is a lie you must be smart enough to see through. Fentanyl is a death trap that very few escape once they enter into it. Do not be deceived. Fentanyl has turned drug dealers into death dealers, and today's easy access to drugs means that a dealer could be anybody. Most illicit drug sales today happen online and over social media. Many of the drug death stories I've encountered are of teens and young adults who bought a pill or a bit of cocaine and had it delivered to their family's house. A lot of times it was from somebody that they knew. Let's make this clear. It does not matter how well you think you know someone. It does not matter if they tell you the drug that they have is really what they say it is. You both do not know if fentanyl is in that drug until it is too late. Just because you've seen a friend try a drug, or even if you've tried something before, does not mean it's going to be safe. These drugs are not coming from a pharmacy or a lab with quality control. These drugs are being blended together by random people who do not care about you and bagged up for a quick profit. What seems like a safe dose could contain enough fentanyl to kill multiple people simply because of how carelessly these drugs are made. Again, you won't know until it's too late. Fentanyl is now the leading cause of death for young people in the United States. Some are looking for relief, some for a good time, many are just curious and make a stupid mistake. Had they known fentanyl was in the drugs they took, they never would have done it. But they can't take that choice back now. 
You, though, have a choice to make for your life. You may struggle sometimes and feel like you need help. You may get curious or tempted to try a drug. Remember that feelings are temporary, but some decisions can last forever. You always have the opportunity to choose something greater, something that will give you life and not death. I encourage you today to realize how precious your life is and that one choice is all it takes to throw it away. Please do not do it. Remember that you have a purpose. You have gifts and passions that are unique to you. You were made to have a future. You can live an amazing life without ever touching a drug. Just keep going after the things you know are right, things that are good for you. You'll be an example for your friends and you can encourage them too. If you're a young person and learned something from this video today, I want you to share it with your friends because this information is saving lives right now. You could be the friend that saves someone's life by keeping them from making a big mistake. Please share it. If you're a parent or guardian and you want to learn more about how you can educate and protect your children from fentanyl poisoning, then I need you to head over to naturalhigh.org slash fentanyl right now and sign up with your email to receive the free fentanyl toolkit. Natural High will keep you updated with information and resources you can share with your children. My name is Dominic Tierno. My natural highs are faith and filmmaking. Thank you for watching. All right, so that concludes my presentation. I just want to let you know on behalf of the Sheriff's Department, we really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to this. Um, and we genuinely do care. I'm sorry that video ran a little bit long, but I think it really makes some good points there. And I'd be happy to open it up to any questions you guys may have. And so if you have questions, go ahead and place them in the chat. Um, I can mute none our now. first question is, since we, we serve a big county, um, Sergeant Sawyer, do you see any kind of trends um, with drug use or distribution by region, high desert, East Valley or West Valley? Um, are, are you talking overall or as it pertains to fentanyl specifically? As it pertains to fentanyl. Um, it, this drug really, it, it hits everybody and opioids hit everybody. So it is countywide. We've responded to overdose deaths in Needles, the mountains, Rancho Cucamonga, San Bernardino, anywhere in the county, we have been there. And it's pretty much straight across the board. Um, so, so there isn't really a trend, it's just everywhere. Okay, we have enough time for one more question. It comes from uh, Carmen Palacios. What happens when you accidentally come in contact with it? That's a good question. Um, it, it just depends on the strength of the drug and how you ingest it. If it just gets on your hands, just wash it off with soap and water. Don't use hand sanitizer because that causes it to go through your skin. But if you just see it or happen to touch it and you wash your hands, it's not a big deal. Where it really gets dangerous is if those powders get airborne and you inhale those into your mucous membranes and then that could potentially cause you to overdose. Before we end, one more question. Are there local examples of first responders or school staff members being harmed from cross-contamination? Yeah, we have had a couple of our local over, uh, officers overdose um, just from handling it, or, or I don't wanna say mishandling, but cross-contamination. Sometimes when we go into a situation, we don't know what we're getting into. And like I said, usually it's from the vapors coming airborne, but where it can also be dangerous if you're handling these pills or powders and you happen to wipe your eye or wipe your nose or your mouth, you can ingest it that way and potentially overdose that way. There have been a couple of examples in our county. Fortunately, they, they weren't too serious and there were either medical personnel on scene or their partners close by. So, so they ended up being uh, taken for precautionary members, but ended up being just fine. Wonderful. This has been a great presentation. Sergeant Sawyer, can people contact you at the email that you've provided for further questions? Absolutely. 
Um, my email's listed right there. I will respond to it pretty quick. I'm sorry I talked a little bit long and it was a shorter question and answer period. But if you send me a question to that email right there, I'd be happy to answer any questions or, or anything you may have. Well, thank you, Sergeant uh, Salyer, and to all the educators and students that joined us today on this wonderful SB Connect session called Dangers of Fentanyl. We look forward to serving your district again. We want you to go to our website, sbcalliance.org, where you can find future video chats throughout the month, some coming up soon this week. Check us out again at sbcalliance.org and on our Twitter page at sbc underscore alliance. Again, thank you, Sergeant Salyer, and for you educators and joining us today in this SB Connect session. Have a wonderful day.